Okay, um, if we're open for business then, uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot going on, of course, and it's going to have to be covered in a fairly compressed time frame. I'm hoping that we can um, have the, uh, the meat of our COVID-19 discussion take place within 45 minutes. We also have a 45, an approximately estimated 45 minute executive session to, um, to deal with the personnel issue. And um, Deborah, if, um, if I'm not mistaken, unless things have changed in the meantime, you have a 7.30 hard stop is that correct? Yes, I actually probably need to leave at 7.20, um, but right around that time, absolutely. Yeah. So. Okay, good. So um, first what I'd like to do is to welcome all of our, both our board members and our guests uh, to, um, to an environment that I expect we'll become increasingly familiar with over time, but at the start, it might seem a little bit um, halting, and my apologies for that. But um, what I would like to do is make sure that we observe, to the extent possible, the, um, the agenda. And after the welcoming of the guests, um, if there are, there are agenda <coughs> revisions. Um, Excuse me, Scott. Please Can speak up. We have one guest online. Um, Corinne is here on the uh, Very good. on the phone, and that is the only person that has called in up to this point. Uh, okay. I just wanted to make you aware of that. Wonderful. No, hold on. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, we can hear you. There are more people trying to call in and saying that the link is not working. I'm getting emails right now. Mm. So if we could, Keith, if you could just. Maybe the link is not working or the check phone? into that. Do we still have Corinne? Are you still on the line? Corinne? I am. I'm just leaving it muted. Oh, thank you for letting us know. Yep. Uh, the number that's been posted, the, Marilyn, the number that's been posted online is the same one that I just used to dial in uh, into the conference. So People should be able to access it. It calls for you have to dial one, then the area code, then the number, and then at the, after that it'll call for a code, and the code is on the agenda. It's an access code with a hashtag. So um, Corinne was able to access it, and we were able to access it. So I think it works. Okay. okay. Well, it's open for numbers of people. You know, many many people could call. All right then. Um, I hope that everybody who is trying to get to this meeting will be able to. Um, in the meantime, Deborah, uh, are we, or Keith, are, is this meeting being recorded so yeah. that it can be shared with Orca? Yes, Orca is. is actually here as well, Scott. It's Orca. being recorded there? Correct. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, next, 2.3 is public comments. I think at this point we have Corinne. I wonder if, um, Corinne, you have anything that you'd like to contribute at this point? Um, the only thing I want to make mention of is I certainly hope that everything possible will be done to keep websites and social media updated. Thank you for that. Um, and I, um, judging by Keith's very tiny facial expression that I see on my screen, he has every intention of doing that. <laughs> yeah, am I right, Keith? Yes, absolutely. Great. But you're right, Corinne, that's really important. Communication is absolutely vital at this time. Um, <clears throat> all right, if there are no more public comments, let's continue on to So I might just introduce this from my own perspective, Deborah, uh, and board members and, and guests. Um, I, I, 
in, in my own mind, and I would look forward to being corrected or, or being educated on this, um, I have kind of three broad priorities. The first being personal and public health, um, without which nothing else is possible. Uh, the second being continuity of our educational and social mission um, in trying to maintain in a, or trying to adapt our organization to radically new and um, fast morphing situation. And um, third would be keeping the financial machinery running so that we can um, not only keep the organization working properly, but also cushion the blow to the local economy, which um, I think is going to be severe in the wake of this um, emergency. But uh, the, the, that's just what I have in my head. And um, I'll hand off to you, Deborah, to continue. And um, board members, as, uh, are you willing to be interrupted along the way, Deborah, if, there, if board members have something to say? Absolutely, and um, I notice that many of our administrators are also online. Um, I know, and I appreciate the board taking the time to jot some questions down. If we don't have time to address them, and or they might require further research, we definitely will do so, and we will. Um, this document will continue to be available for you to check back and see the answers to the questions you may have raised as well. But let me just begin by. Um, Letting everyone know, of course, that this is the first day that our schools in, I mean, actually the state as a whole, have been closed. We utilize this time within our schools to uh, have small groups of teachers meeting <coughs> utilizing Zoom, so there was not going to be um, a large congregation of staff to review much of the information we're going to be speaking about in a few moments. Our leadership team has met several times for at least the last week, uh, closer to 10 days, to prepare for the eventuality of a school dismissal or closure. And um, the time was spent today in schools with principals working uh, with teachers and support staff and reviewing our plans as we make this very large transition from instructing uh, within our schools and supporting our students within our schools to providing remote learning and supports for our uh, families and our staff and our students uh, outside of the school, which as you know is scheduled through <coughs> April 6th, that we'll actually be beginning school again on April 6th unless a decision to the contrary is made. Uh, so I wanted to thank all of them uh, very, very much. One of the first things we did was, in our leadership team, was to um, develop a response plan, which included a number of teams to address the various areas that we knew we would need to be working on. And if it's all right with you, I'd like to put that up on the screen right now. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see us for a period of time, but just to be sure that everyone online can be viewing it as I'm talking, would that be all right with you, Scott? Okay. <laughs> Thumbs up. All right, very good. Is okay. that the document? That's the shared doc. Yeah. Okay, so just a moment and we'll have that available to you. So meanwhile, the first area that we have incorporated <coughs> is the meal provision. Uh, so as you know, the governor has asked us to provide uh, meals to our students throughout the closure. We have been given permission to provide them to all of our students, whether or not they are eligible for free and reduced lunch. Um, as you can see from the section that's marked board update, the third column, what we are, we're preparing at this time 700 meals. We may be expanding that next week, depending upon the need, but that covers the majority of our staff who are uh, excuse me, our students who are currently receiving meals through our meal program. There are nine bus routes that have been prepared and completed and beginning tomorrow, all of our students will be receiving meals. Um, an infinite campus message went out to all families. Some of you may have received it. And it included a letter with attachment, with an attached letter as well as 
um, a verbal overview of our plan and a reference back to the website. Uh, we also sent it out via Twitter as well for our families. And that provides them with uh, not only the letter, but also information about <coughs> how they can find out what their bus routes are. Uh, so if you live in Calais, for example, you can see the street that your child is normally picked up and, you, and a specific time in which we anticipate the meals would be dropped off. Um, they're prepared in, our sanit in a sanitary manner in our U32 kitchen and uh, we begin to deliver them at 10 a.m. If the route is about 90 minutes and um, each of the route areas has a specific time in which we anticipate that uh, those meals will arrive and of course students or staff will, excuse me, students or parents will need to be there to pick up the meals. We provide lunch for the current day and breakfast for the following day. Are there any questions about that work? Well, they could continue to put them on the right. Yeah, don't they? they so can. they could, and, and even if they think of something tomorrow, we could respond to it <coughs> later. Right. Okay. The next area is uh, special. Sorry, I, I, sorry, Deborah, I have a question. Sure. Um, the delivery routes will be following the normal bus routes. So if there are roads uh, where families live that don't access the bus during the day or don't have a regular bus going by, we will have to essentially muster together at points along the route. We are using. Are there plan? Sorry, we're using the same bus stops that we do when children are picked up and dropped off. So that's the lo those are the locations where the food will be delivered. It's the normal uh, pick up and drop off point. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I, I hear that. Um, on on my road, I can think of at least three families um, who do not use the bus to get their kids to school. The bus does not go up Gould Hill and down Norton Road, um, and. <laughs> Essentially, we'd be waiting there with people um, to pick up the bus, and I understand we're doing this now. Is there any possibility to think about in the future expanding those bus routes to cover all the roads where families live so we don't have to leave our homes? Um, that's a possibility. Jonas, would you be willing to put that question in the right-hand side? And I'll have the team, um, Jody Emerson and Michelle in particular, who manages our bus routes, Michelle Sepka, <coughs> and investigate that and we can get back to you. Would that be all right? Okay. Yes, I'm trying to give a thumbs up to avoid a final Oh, oh sorry. Yes, you. Um, sorry. For, sorry, we, we are only looking at our screen the same that you're seeing right now. Okay, so let's talk for a moment about special services. Uh, this is an area, uh, another area, required area that during dismissal we are required to provide for maintenance of skills and accessibility to general ed materials. And our special educators in collaboration with classroom teachers will work together to deliver the materials during this time period. Um, there are guidelines for provision of the remote learning that have been shared today with all special educators, case managers, all of the staff members across the district. Um, and additional guidance on special services and school closure we re was received yesterday and incorporated today. Uh, we also have, today we had a Zoom conference where Kelly was available remotely and she mentioned to me that she had 32 people participate in the, um, in the conference call today and she's doing another on Monday. So that's been successful so far. Um, what we found, not only with special services, but with meal provision, in fact, almost every one of these areas, that while we're sharing the guidance that we know as of today, it's very possible that it will change dramatically. Um, nearly every day there's a new directive from the governor or an interpretation of that directive um, from the Agency of Education uh, sometimes a legal, uh, some legal advice through our associations. And um, so we, we're continuously, dynamically adjusting to uh, all of those changes as they arise. And we will update our documentation for you when these things change as well. So there's a question, um, the board members 
part, and I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Um, let's see if we can quickly incorporate it. This is from Mary Lynn. Um, I will ask Kelly to reply to that question. Um, so if we can't do it during this meeting, we'll definitely have it out for you within by tomorrow. All right. Yeah, it's no rush at all. It was just, I finally got a chance to look at this. There is nothing I need you guys to think about in the imminent week, okay? Okay. Don't worry about that. All right, thank you. And the next area is um, the health and social emotional, I'm sorry, I, I missed one, one of the most important, which is instruction. So the leader of our team, for this area is Jen Miller Arsenal, our curriculum director, and our, the committee members are listed to the side. Our staff are uh, working together to prepare remote learning opportunities for students. For 712 students, the majority of the delivery will be electronic. Uh, however, at the elementary level, it will be primarily uh, units or hard copy packets that the teachers prepare. Uh, <clears throat> as you can see, we had three goals. One was to plan for the instruction during the dismissal. The second was to create the plan to ensure teachers are prepared and supported <coughs> to offer remote learning. And third, to articulate the common expectations for the teachers. Uh, so our team, the committee that's noted here, worked really for about 10 days in preparation for uh, this week. And uh, during their staff meetings today, or remote meetings today within the buildings, uh, all the information relating to this topic was shared. Uh, there were also in the meetings uh, information, there was also information shared about common expectations for teachers at each of the elementary and secondary levels, um, including things like checking in with families, checking in with principals and with one another. Uh, and uh, we created a resource site on our website and uh, that provides much information that the teachers can reference and we are hoping that they'll be uploading information to share by um, grade grouping so that teachers can take advantage of the uh, creativity that others have been um, preparing and putting together. So, and we, as you can see, Keith is on this, this group as well and he is, has been working to support us and providing technical support and will continue to do so along with the tech team during the dismissal. And this includes, um, you'll see more about this in the technology team, but it includes things like remote learning tools and resources and eventually training. Questions on our instructional section at the moment? Book beyond. Yes, that, this is a, this is Chris in the morning. What are the expectations? Your teachers. What are the expectations for teachers? It, yes, what are the common expectations? Well, they will not, first of all, they're, they're not required to, it's an option for them to come to the building to work. They may work at home. And um, I can, just one second, I'll pull up another document and I can give you some more examples. Unless you happen to have it in, do you have it in your computer? I can pull it up real quick. Well, we'll um, would it be all right if we put a summary of that <coughs> in our answer section, Chris? Because I don't have to have that document up, and I can that way everyone can have it for a future point. Would that be all right? That'd be great. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Okay. And then moving on to our health and social emotional learning section. Uh, so. Part of a, a grave concern to all of us is uh, the effect that the closure and um, the anxiety around COVID-19 is having on all of our students, families, and staff. So this team is really important. We have uh, members of our administration, our guidance counselors, and school nurses that have been working together to develop a systematic process for um, supporting folks. So it does include student check-ins, uh, family support and staff support. And um, our nurses and counselors met today to finalize their plans and also prepare a, a slideshow for parents. 
and um, that has been shared back out with staff and families, or will be sharing back out with families. We shared with staff today. Uh, so as you can see, um, it, it'll be something like a, a remote, as I spoke with Lisa LaPlante about this the other day, uh, folks can uh, actually make an appointment and uh, then have a conference call. It can be, whether it be student, family member, or staff as needed. Uh, and we'll be basing the support on um, in the, from the buildings specifically. Okay, I see you have a number. Deborah, of can yeah, can you elaborate on uh, when you say staff support? What that? Can you just elaborate on that, please? Well, as you can in see, in terms of like, what are they getting right right now, or do they have access to emotional support right now? Sure. Well, as you, as you may know, we are, um, our school district is a member of the Employee Assistance Program. Uh, so we always have the option of um, providing employees with the opportunity to reach out to a counselor in a confidential way. Uh, and they can either support them directly or refer them on to someone who can assist them that uh, you know, is completely separate from what we offer here. Uh, but we, um, the staff here will take calls, they will provide individualized help and reference on to others, um, to other support systems if needed. Um, you know, this is an area of concern for us and I think it's, we, we want to be sure that our staff know that we want to do everything we can to support them. I can't really say specifically, it's going to depend very much on what, um, exactly we the concern might be uh, or the uh, as you can see Lisa is typing in there right now uh, <laughs> uh, in answer to one of the questions so she might be able to elaborate on this I think she's on the call as well but um, but it really is going to we're going to try to refer people on if needed but also provide them with the support that our counselors can at their level okay thank you you're welcome so moving on to the next section is technology. And really this area underpins our um, work in, um, let's just scoot that down a little so it's all on one page. Um, it really relates to everything that we are involved in uh, delivering. We even have a software program that helped us set up our bus routes. So <laughs> we use technology for every aspect of um, the services we provide during the closure. Uh, so, as you can see, Keith is leading this work and uh, supported by Arlen, uh, Michael, and Jill, uh, although all of our team really are working together. So we've been supporting, our goal is um, during the closure to continue to support staff and students. Um, our students, if they're having an issue with a Chromebook at the secondary level, we'll ask them to inform their teachers. We'll then communicate that back to our technology staff. We'll use our bus runs, daily bus runs, to uh, replace uh, or trade equipment if there's a problem so that it can be um, addressed. And we'll also um, provide opportunities for our staff to meet. And currently, as I've mentioned, we've been meeting via Zoom and Google Hangouts and uh, extending the social distancing as much as possible. Um, we have been uh, making available to our teachers the as you can see, this list of distance learning technology included here. And uh, we also have a component of our website <coughs> for teachers that have technology <coughs> resources included for all staff. And we continually update, update that, looking for ways that we can provide tech support and training <coughs> when needed. Um, so let's see. So we're using Zoom quite a lot, and um, as you know, it's been made available for free, so that's, and we're using it for this meeting this evening, so it's working out quite well. People are saying that the audio is a little bit choppy. Oh, is it? Coming from here, but I'm not sure that there's a lot I can oh. actively do to, to fix that at the moment, and it's, 
hard to know if it's there or here. Um, yeah. I'm gonna look and just see if there's anything I can do. Okay, all right. Just so you know. Thank you. Well, I, mm -hmm. I think we're finding some of the people who talked with us have choppy audio too, so I don't know, it's hard to know which side it's coming from, as you said. It is. Yeah. Does anyone have any comments about the tech team work or questions? It, it, it looks good. Looks good? Um, no. uh, what I, I think what we should try to do, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting an echo back. If uh, everybody else mutes, we're picking up. Hopefully, it won't be quite as bad. Oh, that's bad. Okay, thank you very much. Almost there. Um, uh, anyway, um, this document is very useful. And is there any way that we can kind of keep it posted as a kind of asynchronous uh, communication system so that? Whenever a board member has a question, board member can go up and post it, and then get an answer when it's convenient or possible for an answer to be given. Sure, absolutely. This is a summary version of the document that we're maintaining for our school for our school staff, uh, but it's an absolute. It's very easy for us to update it periodically, and uh, we'll be observing your questions. It's now, as you can see, some of our admin team are answering questions right now. So it's live for everyone at this point. Yeah, that if we can keep it um, keep it up and keep it live uh, as just a, as an ongoing resource. Sure, absolutely. And and just to just to flag for you, Deborah, before we move away from the COVID discussion, I want to give every board member a chance to to comment. Okay, sure. Um, may I quickly go through the last few sections and then we'll do that, or? Of course, yes. Okay. Great, so the facilities maintenance area, uh, we'll be doing deep cleaning during the school dismissals period, starting with U32 and then working our way through each elementary school with teams of our custodial staff at, um, you know, including all from U32 and the elementary schools. Um, our child care team, uh, we had gotten quite a bit of new guidance since last week about this, including just this afternoon. Uh, so in a nutshell, we are required as a school to, as a district, to provide uh, child care for health care workers as well as um, individuals who are considered first responders. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have a structure of child care already in our school system with the um, Community Connections Program. So we have licenses for preschool and elementary aged students. And our initial plan is to provide uh, child care, if provided we have sufficient numbers, to our students in first in Berlin Elementary and then in um, the Mount West School. Down. East Montpelier. Yeah, East Montpelier. Thank you. If needed. Mm -hmm. So right now we have we've sent out a survey to all families, and so far 15 expressed an interest, and we've given them until tomorrow afternoon to confirm that they might be interested in, in specifically in what their needs are. Uh, but there may be others, and we've also just today uh, become aware that this child care. Uh, is to be made available to school staff as well because we are uh, working and we may, and as you know, some of our local child care centers have closed. Uh, so we're now serving all of our staff, so that may expand the numbers of people who are interested. But our focus is going to remain on those um, medical personnel and the first responders uh, because we want to be sure that they have the support they need during this time period. Deborah, mm -hmm. there are, um, I think, maybe a couple of questions. I'm just watching the chat. Okay. And so I don't know if, sure. we want, if we have time or if we want to let people ask questions. Yes, so. uh, what, what I, one more to go, and then we will. Okay. okay. So the last one is finance. And um, Lori is here, so Lori, I'm going to ask you if you would like to quickly walk mm -hmm. the board through this section for okay. us. Thank yes. you. Yes. Um, so I just want you to know that everything is fine and everyone is getting paid. Um, this week the payroll has already been processed 
And we actually, if you look at this, we're switching to electronic paycheck stubs and electronic paychecks for everyone. That's working out really well. And so that way we don't have to worry about the mail or if there is some type of isolation needed, um, we are ready to go. We do have a computer set up for our senior payroll accountant offsite in the event of an office closure. And my laptop is also configured so our financial system can be accessed offsite by both of our workstations. Um, there's been a lot of confusion about hourly staff, but what I wanted to first share was what is a contractual employee? So at Washington Central, we have between 350 to 375 contractual employees paid at any time. And what that means is that we have an agreement with our union and all of our staff that they get 126 of their contract every two weeks. And what that means is that they have the same exact check amount. And they, this has been going on for years. It's not new. Um, we have also people who work like temps and subs who get paid as they go. So if they don't work, they don't get paid. Um, those people may still be eligible for the unemployment benefits that we've heard about on TV last night. Um, what else can I answer for questions? Um, so what's different is that for hourly people, they do need to complete timesheets. It's a record um, requirement. And so what I've told them to do is to fill in the hours that they're working and then put the rest of the time under what we call paid leave. And for tracking purposes, we have another financial system called ASOP that people can access from their homes or anywhere they have the internet and they can load in there the time that they plan to not work. Um, they can load it in ahead if they had scheduled time off. Um, and what we would do at some point in the future is to review the laws, review what's new, and probably around May, we would need to come back to the board and say, are we going to need to do any adjustments or is there something else we recommend? But at this time, that would be premature. Um, so that's why we didn't put that on as a possible action because everyone is getting paid that has a contract. I'm happy to report, and I have the wrong date in there, that um, we do have payroll check dated Friday done. Um, so the payroll person is here tonight. And the April 3rd check, and I put April 1st, that's really the third. Um, that one's getting printed tonight, so it's going to be in the email queue and in the bank um, financial system all ready to go for April 3rd. So nobody has to worry. Um, what we're also doing is in the next 48 hours, we're going to be processing the April 15th check. And we would have historically been paid on Friday, May 1st. I've moved that back to April 30th. It's a Thursday. And the reason being is that's the third payroll of the month, so employees will get more money because they won't have deductions uh, for health insurance. Um, what else did I have up there? I think that covers the payroll. I know people are really worried, and, and I just want you to be assured that we look like we're going to be, you know, scheduling these payments up to six weeks out, which is... I hope a comfort for all because that's the last thing people need to worry about right now. Lori, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I wondered about community connections. Right. So community connections is in a state of flux a little bit right now. We're trying to get signups tomorrow and the next day to find out. Um, we do have five community connection staff that are on contract who would be treated just like everybody else and who would be getting their paychecks. Um, we do have temps and subs that work at Community Connections and it, if they were scheduled to work just like anyone else, they would get paid as we go. Um, so I think that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, so I wanted you to know another thing is that at last, every year we ask the board for permission to run checks off site, off cycle, excuse me, if you don't have a board meeting. So we're actually, it's, it's, sorry, don't move the screen, please. Um, so we have that authorization for accounts payable. Um, we already started to execute accounts payable today. And what um, that means is that you have a board order tonight. And we're actually had all the schools um, deliver everything here in our office so that we can start running more checks in case someone gets ill. And we're going to give you the warrant after the fact, like it says in the um, agreement that we have. It's called a blanket authorization. 
I did not note here, but cash on hand. We have also been very aggressive in getting all the cash that is manual from every school. Today we had the last pickup of all the hot lunch receipts and, and community connections receipts and everything in the building. Um, we have one more check to come from a town for taxes and other than that, all the money is in the bank. We have plenty of money to pay all our bills and nobody needs to worry about cash either. Um, and then I had two other items real quick. Um, the first is more of a statement. Um, that is, we just learned um, t today that we will be paying preschools for Act 166, who, whether or not the students are attending there, the state has authorized us to pay them as if the students were in attendance at the Act 166 preschools. So that's a statement because someone had asked that question previously and at the time we said we need to comply with the law, whatever it is, and that's the new law. Um, the thing that we have for a question is our bus company for a student. Um, we have a contract with them which says that if um, we do not make up days, they usually give us a discount on our contract. So some years we've not made up a snow day, for instance, and so they've re refunded us or we haven't paid for one student day of transportation. Both Harwood Union and ourselves re received an inquiry um, requesting if the board could make a commitment to them so that they could follow the same protocol and pay their staff during the time of closure. Um, they are helping us out with the meal distribution um, but instead of billing us extra for that and then having to reimburse us, they're asking for a guarantee so that they can let their employees get paid as well. So that will be a tentative action item later in the agenda. And I believe that's all the financial information I needed to share at this time. Um, I hope you feel comfortable because I'm very comfortable with the way things are going and I hope everyone else is um, feeling more confident um, that they know they're going to get paid. Great, Lori. Thank you. That was the last item, right? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's all we have now, Scott. So if you would like for the uh, board members to, to check in with each of them and ask them questions, or we can review um, the uh, I, I think first, uh, I, it would be nice to have some of the questions from those who have check then perhaps a, a little bit later than the public comment section and then we'll have the board members go I'm sorry. So there, there are some questions in chat. I don't know. Do you want him to read them? them? Scott are you referring to the chat questions right now or uh, I, there, I, I do notice there are chat questions, okay. but Marilyn also mentioned that there are others who have joined perhaps on the conference call line. Oh, okay. In the in. Right. right. Well, did you want to start with the board and then go back to the community or? Uh, I'd almost rather do the community first and then, and then have the board go. Okay, are there questions from the community on the uh, teleconference call? regarding the uh, COVID-19 update. Uh, uh, Corinne, are you still there? <laughs> yes, this is Corinne. I guess my only question would be, uh, it certainly sounds like financially, every all plans are, are covered, but I didn't really get a sense of if this is gonna be a, a long-term outage, dismissal, whatever the proper word is, of students, how comfortable is everybody with that long term? Financially or? No, not financially. When I just heard it, Lori, it sounds like all that is being taken care of. I'm just wondering as far as staff and just being able to get prepared and all the ramifications if kids aren't coming back in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Right, well, we are, in, instructionally, um, our intention is to continue unless otherwise directed. And <coughs> keep in mind that we are uh, responding to changing recommendations from the CDC and the governor and the Agency of Education daily. Uh, but to the extent that this dismissal continues, 
Um, we are intending to continue to provide the support for the students in their remote learning and the meal delivery and child care, um, unless otherwise directed. So that's our. That's I what understand we, that. I guess, I'm not sure. I, I understand guess the question. my question is, is a little bit broader than that, as far as right now there is a plan as far as. Um, meals and whatever being delivered by bus and teachers instructing and all, but I'm thinking that a lot of those people may become unavailable. And so I'm just wondering what kind of planning is being done to have um, have potentially other people available or what if nobody is available? What if suddenly you don't have half or all of your bus drivers? Right. Or you don't have half of your staff? because they're ill or they're tending others in their family who are ill. Right, well, of course, uh, we, that, that's the reality. Well, we it down uh, of course, we, we, and we don't intend to require the people work if they're ill. Um, we, um, not all the schools are mm -hmm. using, within the bus company are using buses to deliver, so uh, perhaps there might be some backup people available. Um, we, you know, Corinne, all I can say is that we are working to respond to every potential uh, eventuality and adjust as we can. Um, and whenever, you know, if we have to make adjustments to the services we offer or provide due to a scenario that you offer, that you um, refer to, if that were to occur in the future, we would have to do that. Uh, if you want to add anything, I, Lori, yeah. What? The only thing I had to add, Corinne, was um, this is Lori um, that I learned today from Michelle at like five o'clock that we're only currently using about half of our bus drivers. So that's the good news. So that you know we will have to take this in stride, and I think we're going to have to keep regrouping. This isn't over. It keeps evolving every day. I've never seen so many questions and emails come in my life, and we're really appreciative <laughs> of your um, help. And I think we should consider that as a long-term, you know, what are we going to do? I think the leadership team will need to reconvene and we're going to have to keep talking. Yeah, I think yeah. so. We're just, we just have to respond every day in a dynamic way as things change. But thank you. Yes, thank you. That, that's great. Um, now, uh, there are also, I noticed, a couple of questions in the chat yeah. that I think might be best answered directly. Um, either in the chat or perhaps separately after the meeting. I don't think they're necessarily um, crucial to uh, to this discussion right now, unless someone... I would, I see um, that there is a question here that, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, will school common spaces be used each day or multiple times a day if staff are needing to work in the building? and cannot do all their work remotely. I'm not, I, I feel like I need some clarification about that question, uh, but if, if, if honey, if you could provide some clarification of that, because it's an, it's an important question about common space that I think we do need to hear about and how we can kind of mitigate uh, people coming in and out at the same time. Well, we have, um, yeah, I, I'm oh. happy to, clarify that Mary Lynn and thank you for listening board I hope that you can hear me because this is all new and confusing um, I'm just wondering oh. honey you just muted yourself again so just unmute she yourself excuse Louise thank you uh, staff is going to be in and out of the building every day preparing that's apparent at Romney at least and are those common spaces that we're sharing getting sanitized every single day if the if there's a crew working in other buildings yes for any any place where there's active employees there they will there will be cleaning done daily um, but uh, in we're going to start at u32 with um, a staged full, a deep cleaning process that amy molina is along with david um, our facilities director there are initiating because at the high school, our teachers um, don't need to access their classrooms daily, they're actually going to be taking along um, all of the materials that they expect to need and um, will be essentially cleaning that building first and uh, you know in a thorough way and then closing out the rooms as that occurs. And we'll do the same thing uh, through the elementaries um, 
In addition to the daily cleaning, there'll be the deep cleaning that will occur. I don't have a copy of the schedule at this point in time, but that is going that is scheduled to occur throughout the district within the closure period. And I guess I just would like clarification that so as of right now, all staff will be able to be working remotely and being in and out of the building as needed for curriculum materials, but otherwise there will be no congregation of any size groups as much as can be avoided. Is that we correct? have we've stopped congregating um, early this week. We've not had in person meetings of more than 10 people. We've only had zoom meetings even today when we had our in service. All of our principals uh, organized small groups and uh, around the building so that people could take part in in zoom meetings rather than large group meetings. Uh, so that's that protocol has been implemented already based upon the requirement um, that we avoid being together in, in groups and sharing, as you were just saying. So yes, we are on that. As far as um, staff being in the building, well, you know we have several staff. We um, sent out an FAQ to the, uh, all of our employees in today, which identified various roles and responsibilities. We also sent out a uh, a survey asking for those employees that are not directly involved in cleaning food service or um, preparing lessons for students that uh, they vol ask them to volunteer for one of the three areas that we are providing direct service to families which one would be the food service or delivery the um, uh, support for the instructional materials meaning copies and preparation of packets and things like that and um, and child care, which when it gets up and running right now, we do not have that up and running. We are um, still collecting information about what our needs are. So we're, we're using the staff that um, remain in uh, ways in which they're, in which they um, wish to be involved. And, um, and then of course we work with individuals who have uh, any kind of medical concerns um, obviously, just like we would at any other point in time. Uh, Deborah, I have a, a question. This is uh, Deanna Murray from Romney. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that our staff were on this uh, on the Zoom site. Um, we hadn't shared that Zoom. Sh we were looking for this to be a board discussion. We're happy to hear from you, but um, I just wanted to, I'm just kind of curious as to how that was shared. In any case, Go right ahead and ask your question, and I'd like to get back to the board, if I may, because we do have board members that have not yet had a chance to speak. The um, website was shared with all community members. The website was? The Zoom meeting, Corinne's on. No, she's on, no, she's not on. She's on a uh, phone conference. That's why. I was just curious. I thought this was, but maybe someone else shared it. I don't know. Regardless, um, I want to be sure, Marilyn, that everyone had an opportunity to speak who is from the board. That's all. I, so um, we can we can certainly take questions from staff at any time. Uh, so we'll take them now. It's up to the it's up to the board chair to decide how to proceed. Yeah, it's so, it's fine. Okay, go ahead. Great. Um, well, I'm wondering if you could. Uh, is, uh, Scott or Keith, whoever is on the screen, if you could scroll back up to the um, social or emotional and health well-being part of the document. Um, and my question for that is, um, while uh, we were in our buildings today um, with all of the staff members that were there um, in, in very large groups together, and are expected to go to the schools um, to create curriculum and to deliver things. Um, how are staff, um, you know, how are we going to be able to curb the anxiety of currently possibly being exposed to this virus while we are required to do our contractual abilities? Yeah, I'm sorry if that was the case. We understood that principals were going to divide people up into smaller groups um, and have meetings that way using Zoom in each of the schools. I wasn't at your school today, so I, I can't speak to it specifically. Um, but 
with the daily cleaning and the fact that you are only required to go to your school to get materials and you can work at home, we're doing our best to mitigate your exposure. Uh, and of course, using social distancing is a part of that. Thank you. If you Thank have you if you have a specific um, if you have further specific yeah, questions, I hope that you feel free to contact me or your principal, and we can work with you personally if if you have individual concerns. Um, I I just know that on a um, not you know I can't speak for for others, but this is um, just not an individual concern of mine. This was um, widely expressed by uh, many many people, and it is a concern of mine that I just wanted to, to make known. I think I think that your concern yeah, is... Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's shared by that, others that, for that sure. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, um, would you want yes. to address um, your question? We've, we've heard it, um, and thank you very much, yeah. Um, I, I'd like, uh, Kari is concerned that we might ha not have time to yeah. um, just hear from each board member, That's what but I think, too. Um, I think it's very important that we get the uh, you know the sense of the board as to your reactions about this. And I wonder if we could start with you, George. Very short. Whatever you have to say. I'm pleased with the way that um, things are going, um, and, uh, and I'm glad that, that people have stepped right up and quickly pulled this together. Um, I am slightly concerned about putting uh, teachers at risk, um, and I was just uh, wondering a little bit more about how we were going to divide them up. Um, maybe even if it was an odds and evens um, by classroom number, um, and then even um, isolate that to maybe um, one hallway um, where a cleaning crew could come in um, and, and keep that area clean. That's all. Thanks, George. Um, we, we don't have to answer okay. those now. If you take note of each of these concerns, and we can address them um, and uh, get back to George with them. Sure. Is that possible? Of for course. Thank you. Our um, administrative staff. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Good. Thank you. Um, Diane? Thank you for all this great work. It's really impressive. And um, I've just spent today, I work up in the Northeast Kingdom in a school system, and so I've just spent today really diving in and talking with staff and, and having to reassure them and listen to what the concerns are and make sure we're addressing them, as well as the uh, distance learning plans and all the other things. So this as a board member is incredibly helpful. So I really appreciate the time that was put into it and the openness to questions. So thank you. Thanks very much, Diane. Uh, Kari, and then Dorothy on deck. Yeah, um, excellent work, and I, Deborah, I hope you'll be forthcoming if you need anything from the board in terms of messaging or marshaling resources or anything else. Thank you. Thanks, Kari. Dorothy and Flora up next after. Okay. I'm, I'm having to get used to this technology. Um, I, I'm perfectly satisfied with everything. I, can we get a printout of what this all was uh, presented on the computers tonight? Is there a way to get that so I can read it, some of it? I was listening and reading at the same time. Yes, I... But, well, um, Dorothy, I'm it was... I'm trying to get used to this, yeah. forgetting to mute myself on and off. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Dorothy, this was shared in an email you received today, but I'd be happy to mail you uh, a hard copy if you would like. Uh, no, if it came in an email, that's uh, okay. I probably did download it. I was trying to get connected to Zoom. When I, uh, Of course, Jeremy. Because I don't know. But the link should be in, uh, in an email for today. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, Floor, followed by Lindy. 
I, I just want to say thank you, and I really appreciate all the work, and I am forever grateful. I, I do want to emphasize that that we're a collaborative organization, and everyone's well-being is our priority. So I appreciate that everybody's been working together, and we're here to support you all as a board. That's it. Thank you so thank you. much, Flora. And uh, Lindy, and after Lindy, Stephen, please. I wasn't unmuting, but now I am. Um, I This is great work, and as a teacher in another district, I was spending the day in similar work. It's good to see that all the districts are pretty much on the same page. I was delivering lunches and greeting people that way outside in the fresh air where you can keep your social distance. Um, my understanding from some of the social emotional concern is there are no requirements that people be in the building in groups anymore, so that may quell some of that. Today was the last day of that, and they were supposed to be small groups. So thanks for all the work. Thank you, Lindy. Stephen, and then Chris McVeigh afterwards, please. No concerns. Thanks for the work. Excellent. Thanks, Stephen. Chris, followed by Jill. Yeah. Um, Many thanks to all you folks. This is a very nice outline. Um, I, I want to mention some um, possibilities. Following up on Jonas' statement about the buses going house to house, um, if that is possible, because it sounds like they may be doing that to deliver materials or um, computers, because I don't think that that would be delivered group by group. Maybe it would be. But um, given that the there's only probably one bus route a day, um, having um, house to house deliveries, I think, would be very, very beneficial for our, for our students and their families. Um, also, is there um, someone who could be designated as a, a contact for the task? Um, uh, Middlesex has an emergency committee, um, and having that person have a contact with the district would be great, particularly if there's time for sharing resources like the delivery system through the bus. Um, but overall, thanks very much for your help. Great, Chris. Thank you. Jill and then Marilyn. Oh, I did it. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, no, I, I just want to echo what others are saying. Thank you for your work. And uh, it really sounds like uh, you guys are headed in the right direction in a really challenging time. So I feel uh, a lot of confidence in what I've heard and how you're approaching a really challenging situation. I would Thanks, echo. Jill. Um, Marilyn? I echo what Jill and Flora said. You guys have done a great job. Um, I really hope that you as a leadership team are taking some breaths and taking self-care because your staff um, and your families are really going to be supporting, looking to you for support right now. This is fluid and evolving every day, and I know that you are seeing that as well. I'm happy to hear that we're stopping to congregate uh, teachers in the buildings at the same time. That is essential to protect our most vulnerable community uh, members and that the social emotional and the food um, that you are providing right now is absolutely you know, the number one thing. To speak to Corinne and what she had spoken about, this is a long-term plan, Corinne, for sure, that we have to be looking at, uh, but I think that looking at this at a weekly basis is going to help to sustain everyone and keep everyone's energy where it needs to be focused to at that moment. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Jonas, and then Jaya. Uh, so I'll you know, echo what everyone else said, uh, in intense gratitude for uh, all the work that's being done. Um, you know, we're asking Deborah and the central office and everyone in all the buildings to to undertake a uh, an educational Manhattan project. Um, and um, you know, I you know I had a you know I'll say you know in terms of self care, I know I had a very challenging day myself, um, keeping it together with all of the things that I had to do uh, here at home with my family. Um, and I just want everyone who's doing, I can't imagine the strain that you guys are under uh, and the pressure and the, uh, the anxiety. Um, so it's okay to have a bad day um, and it's okay to, you know, 
be freaked out and anxious about this because I am too. Thanks, Jonas. JR? Yeah, this is really impressive, and um, thank you for all your, your hard work. Um, I mean, everything you already have to do, and then to do this on top of that. Um, it's amazing, and it's very clear, and it's, it's a good plan, and I feel confident that it's going to work. And I'm, I'm relieved that teachers will be able to work from home. Um, that, that is reassuring to me, and, and um, yes, thank you for all your hard work. Great, Chaya. Thank you so much. All right. Um, I think what we should do is, if there's no objection, jump ahead to executive session where we would have Deborah and Aaron. And I think we're going to need Keith for technical reasons. But, um, but that would be it in terms of uh, other participants in the video conference. Is that, um, are there any objections to this? I, be, I, we, I believe that we have a couple of things to do, a point to, um, before we move into we, executive session. Um, what I'd like to do is do the executive session before Deborah has to excuse herself. Oh, or do okay. as much of it as possible. And then we can come back and um, do, that. do the rest of the open session. Okay. That would be my suggestion. Um, so, uh, Chris, uh, did I take it that you move for us to enter I move to exec executive yes. session for a personnel issue? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Marilyn. All right. Um, I think what you can do, all in favor of this, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, can you see the raise hand? Oh, OK. Um, raise your hand in reality. That's even better. Um, good. And, and Dorothy, I can't see you. I, do you have? Um... I, I'm raising my hand. OK, very good. All right. Um, so we're now in executive session. Wait a minute. Uh, I would invite um, Aaron and Deborah and Keith to stay. Just pause for a moment. We have to thank everybody else. Excuse us. I'm sorry. Yes, um, Deborah. We have to leave um, guest hour. Um, Orca has to leave as well as David and Lisa. Could you give us a moment to clear the room? Okay. Yes. Okay. We are on the record uh, as far as work is concerned. <laughs> okay, um, Floor, would you like to repeat your motion, please? Sure. Uh, do not renew the employee effective June 30th, 2020. And Dorothy seconded that motion. Um, is there any further discussion of that motion? Effective if June, not, June 1st. All in favor. OK, we're going to have to do this. Um, Is that my kid? We're going to have to do this by roll call, I think. Um, uh, George? I abstain. George abstains. Diane? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Kari? Aye. Thank you very much. Dorothy? Aye. Dor Thank you, Dorothy. Um, Floor? Aye. Lindy? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Chris? Aye. Jill? Abstain. Marilyn? Aye. Jonas? Aye. Jael? <coughs> aye. And I'm an aye as well. OK, um, the motion carries. And we can continue on with our agenda. Um, so, having 
it will take me a moment to find our agenda, but I believe that one of the items we have is um, to appoint a new board member from, um, uh, from Berlin, is that correct? I have a question. I have a question. We, we didn't finalize 3.1. Actions required in response. Did Deborah give you more feedback after our steering committee meeting about appointing? Uh, Lori mentioned that they needed something similar to in the summer, appoint uh, you to be able and a backup to sign yes, yes. on behalf of the board. So that should be first. Uh, Thank you, sorry. Laura. No, no, no. No need to apologize. It's, mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Um, let's do that. We just need to formulate the um, the the motion <coughs> properly. Um, do you have it off the top of your head, Floor? No, but I, I'm working on it. One sec. Okay. Um, I, I'm still sorry. After. Could you explain what it is you're talking about? Right. This is in order to, um, you know how in the summertime when board members are scattered to the winds, we authorize the board chair or uh, the vice chair to be able to sign uh, in order for payments to take place um, until the board can come back and um, after the fact uh, approve the board warrants. This is the this is the sort of thing that we're um, that we're talking about. Does that? Um, well, I'm curious if that means we're not planning board meetings virtual like this, or I have I'm just wondering what. This, this is an this is an additional backup. Um, ju we're just building in as much redundancy as we can um, in case. God forbid we can't muster a quorum, even online, um, that we have. Uh, the idea was to have um, either Floor or me be authorized to, to give the interim approval to the board orders for issuance of payments, and then have, uh, sorry, I put that badly. Um, Floor or I would be able to authorize the issuance of payments subject to the board's later approval of the board orders that uh, are being paid against. And we would probably also include Jonas in this, again, um, out, of a, out of an overabundance of caution. Um, does that make sense to you, or do you think there's a problem with that? No, I just wanted clarification on what we were signing over and why, since I don't think any of us are going anywhere, but I understand if we all, you know, die from Corona or something, there won't be a quorum. But otherwise, I think it would be contact. Yeah, the quorum is probably the least of our problems in that case, but, yeah, but, um, so, uh, whenever you have a motion ready, Flora, feel free to pitch it. Okay, but should I be the one making the motion? But I just to ask, authorize it. I know but the board moves to authorize is Scott Thompson, the vice chair or the clerk, to sign on behalf of the board warrants as needed. Does that make sense? And I also wanted to explain to the board that part of the reason this came up is that there, there was a question of being able to, to pay our employees if things changed and dramatically nobody could be at school. Uh, Lori wanted to be, make sure that somebody could sign. And Scott and Jonas and I had a meeting, uh, several steering committee meetings, thinking that in this case, Scott is quarantined right now because he just came back. And to be able to have options in in behalf of the board. So oh, I can you bring that mm -hmm. again, Floor, because I think that's, um, I'm wondering if there was enough detail in terms of what would warrant the uh, need for that backup. And I would propose that we put in succession language. Okay, if the chair is not available, then the vice chair, and if the vice chair is not available, then the clerk. Just so it's not authorizing three, 
at the same time, because or would mean anyone of the three could do it. If that's what we want. That makes sense to me. Are you okay with that, sir? I, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, I'll read it again. Uh, Diane had a question. I, I guess I just said that I will look, I don't know, Stephen, if you have a comment on this. Uh, authorize, the uh, authorize the chair, the vice chair or clerk in behalf of the board to sign uh, warrants as needed. This is Steve, I am muted. Is Lori still there? It, yes, I just, sorry, uh, I just texted her and she said to authorize payment to first student without a reduction due to school closure. Well, that's different. So, I, because I think what you're asking for is you're asking for the ability to, um, that should a quorum not be possible due to COVID-19? Because that's my understanding that that's where this is coming mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. And so and we just need to add that, to me, we need to add that line in there that um, if a quorum is not, a board quorum is not available due to COVID-19, then we authorize first for Scott Thompson to be authorized to sign that um, if Scott Thompson is not available then floor if floor is not available then Jonas this is Steve again Scott and floor I guess um, without a clear proposal language from the administration on exactly what they would like us to consider and vote on I just said I know they want action but I suggest we gave it so I just got a, a text from Lori. I texted her to see, and what I read is what she would like in the action is to authorize payment to first student without, without a reduction due to school closure, which I know is completely different to what I said before. I just texted her again, but that's what she's telling. That, that's the immediate need. So I think that is an action item that's needed, but to me that's different than having the backup because I was noticing on the okay. form that first student was doing that. So I think when we were going through that grid, um, that was just an oversight that she didn't present that they were requesting that payment. And so I think that's a separate item that we have a quorum that we could vote on. But then the other part that you're talking about, and I would agree with Stephen, is that um, we want some clarity around if a quorum is not available due to COVID-19. So tabling that until our next meeting uh, so that we know specifically what's needed. But that doesn't mean tabling the uh, payment authorization for first student. Right. Um, uh, I'm okay with the tabling. Is there any objection to tabling it? Tabling the, the initial idea of the three backups till next time? We should still be okay? I hope. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Laura Sorry, Lori just uh, texted again. I'm trying to get her on speaker, but she said yes. For a student only at this time. Uh, oh, sorry, he's, she's calling us now. Uh, you're in speaker, Lori. Hi, Floor. I'm sorry. You're speaking with the entire board. Oh, oh great. Well, like. Oh. Oh. And um, the reason why I was not asking for any other motions at this time is because we've had no other issues that would require board action. Okay. So that's, you know, like when we come down to the employee's salaries and leave, we'll need to discuss that at a future meeting. Um, at this time, it's not going to impact anyone. Um, Okay, that sounds, that sounds good. So I just had kind of typed you up the motion on a text message, if that would be helpful. Yeah, I just read it. I just, the board had questions. Okay, I'm sorry. So what's the question? <coughs> so, Lori, what's, what's the goal of the motion? I apologize, I cannot hear you. So, uh, Chris McVeigh is asking what is the goal of the motion? The motion is to um, convince the bus company that they should continue to pay their employees, that we will honor the full value of our contract. Okay, is that, um, will the bus, is the bus company um, willing to be flexible in terms of the services that they provide? Sorry, Laura, if you have to 
Yeah, yeah. I will. I will trans. Yeah. The system is terrible. Yeah, he was wondering if the bus company is going to be <coughs> flexible with the mm -hmm. bus routes. And, and if the if the district if the um, district so what needs happened is, is that um, instead of billing us for the bus routes that they're um, convening due to food distribution and stuff. They would just consider that part of the contract if okay. we agree to just pay them the regular contract price. Okay. Is, is that clear with everybody? Um, and is this, again, I want a little bit more clarity. Is this um, something that we then lose control of? Meaning if we, if we vote to do this now, then we can't revisit it in the future if the if first student is not uh, being as cooperative as we might want them to be? I, I believe, I don't know if Lori was able to hear, but I believe all you're doing is authorizing one of us to be able to, to sign that, so I don't see why it couldn't be on the Actually, all we're offering is that we're going to pay the, the bus company for the days that they're not driving right now. So okay, they're about half the fleet to do the food distribution, and then the other fleet is parked. That's my understanding. For how long is Chris's question? Yes. And, 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 questions from board members I have one more question um, do we want to put in the condition that it is actually going to be paid to the drivers because that's the purpose of it, it Chris's question is that do we want to put in that it's a condition that bus drivers will be paid because that's the condition yes I would do that mm -hmm. thank you okay did you hear that Chris I did okay okay thank so, you Laura. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Laurie. I will use your motion. Thanks. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's um let's create a motion out there then. So I'll move to authorize payment to first student with dollar reduction due to school closure. And Chris, can you add the language you were looking for? Yes. Um, provided that uh, condition upon. Uh, first students assurance payments that their buses, their bus drivers are still going to be paid whether they're whether or not they're driving buses. Thanks very much. Um, Lisa, did you get all that? No. Can so, can you repeat? Can someone repeat the whole thing? I have. Did, did Lisa get that? I, I can't really tell. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, I have I ha I have part of it. That floor moved to authorize payment authorize authorize payment to first student without a reduction due to school closure. Did I get that right? Yes. Without a, without a reduction due to school closure, and then providing conditions. <clears throat> I, I didn't get the rest, Chris. Sorry. Okay, so then, um, <clears throat> conditions on assurance drivers will be paid whether or not they're driving buses. Assurance that first to first student that their bus drivers will be paid whether or not they're driving buses. Whether or not they are driving buses. Okay, you want me to read it again? Sure. Please do. So floor moved to authorize payment to first student without a reduction due to school closure, providing conditions on assurance to first student that their bus drivers will be paid whether or not they are driving buses. You said condition, condition on assurance. Um, Instead of yeah, it, condition. Condition. Okay, I didn't understand. Yeah, on the condition that first student continue to pay its drivers. Okay. 
You give it one more shot, perhaps? Yes. So, floor move to authorize payment to first student without a reduction due to school closure, conditioned on assurance to first student or from first student? Anyway. It was just the drama. Insurance drivers will be paid. Okay. That their bus drivers will be paid whether or not they are driving buses. That's super awkward. Yeah, that sounds okay. What do you think, Chris? I, I think so. <clears throat> okay. So um, we have that. That's basically Flora's motion. Do we have a second? No, second, yeah. Chris seconds. Good. Any further discussion? Um, this is Steve. So what we're voting on, <coughs> we're going to pay the bus company. We missed most of that, Stephen. Can you say it again? So we're voting on if school closes, we're going to pay the bus company. Yes. Correct. Because the bus, the buses, half the fleet will still be in use. And we don't want, um, I, I gather that we don't want the drivers, you know, laid off and um, thrown under the bus. Well, it's a round language for me. School hasn't closed. So, so Stephen, are you, you're, it sounds like you're saying that if school is discontinued so that there's no remote learning going on. No, I think what Stephen is saying is that it, it, we should accept a friendly amendment to say in the event of closure or dismissal. Well, that event has already happened. So during this yes. crisis, yes. Yes. this COVID-19 crisis, well but we're not technically closed yet but we are dismissed you could also just say during the governor has declared a state of emergency which yeah. he's done and then that covers a lot without describing exactly the situation of the school Ooh. or we could just stay through the remainder of the current school year right we could just say we're going to honor the first student contract through the remainder of this existing contract or through the <coughs> remainder of this ex existing school year and, and add Chris's language contingent on the drivers continuing to be paid. That sounds like a, like a friendly amendment to me. Do you, do you accept it, Flora? Yes, yes, sir. Well, I do wonder though, because again, if we look on our grid, created um, under the finance section, it says specifically about first student is requesting a commitment to pay their contract during the closure period. So I'm not sure <coughs> by saying that we're planning to honor the contract without making a statement of either closure or dismissal, um, if that's going to match what we're needing to say to come. <coughs> I think I think our the, I think this language is appropriate because we really don't know what's going to happen for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, it may be that we enter a legal status that is neither open nor closed nor dismissed. We have no idea what's going to happen. So I think saying that we're you know we are committing to pay their drivers, make sure that they're not unemployed, um, and that they have some income that is circulating within the community um, for the rest of the school year. I think anything after that is a question. Okay, we're sort of in between things here. We have a um, we have a friendly amendment to the um, to the motion that changes. I, I would feel more comfortable if we had a second to that friendly amendment. I second this friendly amendment. Okay, thank you. So, Lisa, um, how are you able to um, catch all this? Yeah. So I have. Floor move to honor the first student contract through the remainder of this existing school year, conditioned on assurance uh, from first student that their bus drivers will be paid whether or not they are driving buses. <coughs> that sounds right to me. Um, and Chris seconds. Okay. Uh, any, any more discussion of this? 
So I just have, uh, do you, does that language cover first um, a student still providing the service that we currently want? Uh, it should, I mean. I think it should too, but I'm, I'm cautious. This is Steve, I'd say the motion we've made exceeds what they had requested. We're giving them our we're giving them our good faith assurance. If they've only got you know half the buses running, um, but they're getting paid the full the full contract, you know, then Chris, I think the the concern about asking them to in, increase the routes is, is will probably be no problem. I, this is good faith. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I think if we just get it on the books, I mean, we could always adjust it in two weeks if we had, if they needed something further. But it, I think this is making a commitment to pay them. That's what they need. Four thirty. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, John. Uh, Harry, do you have any thoughts? I'd like to move forward. Okay. I think um, that seems to be a, a common sentiment. Uh, ready for a vote then? Mm -hmm. all, in, all in favor, please show your hands or thumbs. All right, um, I'm seeing thumbs up, Dorothy, Stephen. He says uh, thumbs up. All right. Okay. All right, very good. Okay, um, the eyes have it. And I'm not gonna, uh, it looked like it was unanimous to me. Um, very good, so now 4.0, board operations, appointment of new board members. We've got, um, Flora, you were at, you were at Berlin. Monday? Yes, uh, I was in Berlin, and the select board in Berlin has no problem with us appointing Jonathan Goddard to our board. So, do you want me to make a motion again? Please, please do. So, um, um, <laughs> make a motion to appoint Jonathan Goddard to the Washington Unified Union School District Board for a year. Right, from Berlin, I guess. From Berlin, Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> for the, the balance of the year. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll second that, Kari. Thank you, Kari. Great. So, the floor moves. Kari seconds. Any for any further discussion? <coughs> if not, no. uh, all in favor, show of thumbs or hands. Um, once again. Dorothy. Uh, thank you, Dorothy. And Stephen. Great. All right. It's unanimous. Um, welcome, Jonathan. Um, thank you. Right. Yeah, and thank you, Jonathan. Amen to that. So um, we have consent agenda. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, Scott, if I may, just really quickly, 10 seconds. We still don't have any from Worcester. The select board nominated uh, Will Baker. He declined. Uh, we still need someone from Worcester. Jael and I have beaten the bushes. The select board is looking. Uh, it's a hard time to ask people to join the school board, but we need a full compliment. So if anyone has any leads, please let us know. Thanks, Jonas. Absolutely right. Um, OK, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes of March 4 and March 11? So moved. Chris okay. moves. Um, was that Lindy? Second, yes. Thank you. Chris moves, Lindy seconds. Any discussion of those minutes? There's a lot in there, but you will have had a chance to look them over. Um, all right. If there are no changes, all in favor, please say aye. Or no, uh, thumbs, hands. As you, thank you, Dorothy. And thank you, Stephen. All right, very good. Um, the minutes carry. Um, we have one personnel action, I believe, which is hiring a, um, a new nurse, which is a timely action. <laughs> um, 
I don't. I don't have that right in front of me. Does I do. Do you want me to make a motion? Please do. Please. Um, I make a motion to approve Jennifer B R I T E L as school nurse at U32. Um, Thank you, Lindy. Second. Second. Jael seconds. Thanks. Um, any discussion? It seems like uh, a timely hire. Okay, in that case, um, Flora's already indicating her sentiments. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Or right, thumb, okay. hand. Dorothy. Thanks, sorry. Excellent. Once again, um, we have a new nurse for U32. Thanks. Now, uh, seven is future agenda items. One thing I wanted to just check in with you all on. Um, do you want to try to meet more frequently um, and, and try to keep it short, as this was less short than I had hoped? But um, uh, frequent check-ins, but shorter. And, um, and also, Zoom allows breakout sessions. So what we could do is potentially break out committees during one of these um, online meetings where committee members could meet together in the, in the context of a broader Zoom video conference. Um, do you want to think about this? We don't have to make a decision on it. We can, we can work our way into it. There's so much going on. Um, very difficult to plan anything. I think, um, Scott, I'd like to request that the principals, if they're able, have um, an invitation to zoom in when we do meet. That would be helpful just to see how they're all holding up from their perspective. Keep, um, I apologize that I sent that zoom out, but no one could call in uh, okay. or it was hard. So if you could just have someone call in and check it to make sure that the link that's out there, so people are doing it in an appropriate manner that they should have done it. I'm sorry, but uh, that would be helpful. Too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, no problem. I figured that we're, we're just getting off the ground. So we'll, we'll, get, our, we'll get into our groove um, and we'll work this out. I, uh, any, uh, to just add to Mary Lynn, I saw nothing that said don't share this link and we do have a public meeting. So if we're going down one way for public and one way for the board, it needs to be clearer. Understood. Thanks, Lindy. And our staff is always welcome to come to our meetings. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is. It's a it's a public meeting, and especially now, I think people are are more concerned than ever about what's going on. Um, any other observations or suggestions or? But to your point, I think more frequent check-ins around now, just to. Uh, take the temperature and see how people are doing would be helpful, even if they're just for that purpose alone. Yeah. Well, and I, it, it, yeah, I agree with you, Chris. And I also think there's a lot of work that we were planning to do that we probably can't do at this point because we're not going to be able to ask staff to do anything uh, other than react to this crisis for quite a while. So I think maybe that's the you know kind of reframing our our immediate plans for the next couple of months is something we're going to need to do at the next meeting. But if we do meet more frequently, then we really have to set a time limit and be done by that time, and either table or not. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have a problem with meeting more often, but if they're going to still go on, then that would be um, very frustrating. I agree. I, I completely share your point of view. And I think if uh, pretty much everybody else does, too. I, 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 I honestly disagree. This is the least anxious I've felt all day is being in here with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. This is so good. Uh, it's it's so lovely. <laughs> um, okay. Clarity about when you're saying meet more often, are you saying just say six o'clock on Wednesdays? Yeah, um, that's what I was, that's kind of what I had in mind. Could we make it later so that George could, could attend um, and yeah. to have small kids? It gives us a little bit more time to uh, 
to get them dealt with. Seven o'clock would be great, honestly. And Zoom gives us the flexibility for that. And then I'm there and travel. That's true. Um, what's the sense of the of the members of the board? It was seven o'clock by Zoom. Kai. Uh, I, I want to offer a different perspective, which is that I don't have a strong opinion about how often and how long we meet, except that I think we should be very cognizant of the demands that that puts on the staff. Yeah. I think that should really be a guiding principle right now. Yeah. yeah. You can't even imagine the, the stress that they're under, the stress that they're going to be under in the coming weeks. We should be very careful about burnout and um, and, and not burden them with a, a bunch of additional evening meetings. Yeah. Um, so I just not uh, perspective. So well, then, let, yeah. let me make a suggestion. Why don't we all reserve Wednesdays at six in the event that there's a reason for us to convene because there's something happening, but otherwise not change our schedule unless the staff asks us to do so because they have needs of us. Does that can we do that? How, how much warning do we have to give before we meet? Um, oh, we can do it. Well, but how long, how long do we Scott? Yeah, and that was my question. It's just, it's just a few days. Yeah, so I would suggest that we, that we hold the time, but uh, leave our regular schedule in place and seek guidance from the staff about whether there are issues where they need, you know, quicker, our, our attention more quickly. Right, okay. Got it. Totally. I, 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 I would yeah. recommend we just keep our meeting, our next meeting, and think about this procedurally and i'm a theory this creates so now the administrators have to warn we create an expectation in the community and then at the last minute it's not going to happen so then they need to communicate that the meeting's not going to happen this is way more that, that that wasn't what i was suggesting I was suggesting that we as board members try to be available knowing that there might need to be a meeting called at short notice, not that we should warn a meeting. Okay, understood. Yeah. yeah. We have, we'll otherwise just stick with our normal schedule. And otherwise stick with our normal schedule, yeah. Yeah. And the um, only problem I have with that is I have a regular meeting on the fourth Wednesday, but I would just be absent that time, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. We'll keep that in mind. All right. Well, I can't wait till we can get back to fighting about proficiency grading. It sounds so luxurious at this moment. <laughs> I know. It was a long time ago and, and far, far away. Um, so uh, if there is no objection, shall we adjourn by consensus at 8.28? Scott, can yes. I, can I? Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Keith, thanks for making this happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Keith, really well. Scott. Has a question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, quick question. Hi, everybody. Did you have Good a night. Good night. Scott, uh, we have one question. Scott, we still have a question, question here. Did, no, I'm just wondering, did you have board orders that you needed to approve? Um, we we did. did. Yeah, we did it by, um, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. And then the other thing was that there was a policy on the agenda. Was that you're just going to do that next time? Obviously. Yeah, we're we're punting on uh, okay. Okay, thanks. Um, okay. Okay. Might thanks. want to make sure Lisa has the newest agenda. So I think the policy stuff was taken off. That's true. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't that one that okay. yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah, I think it was sent to you, Lisa, on uh, yesterday at three thirty-three. Okay. Yeah. That's revision two at the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lindy. All right. Okay, thanks. Okay. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. And many, many thanks to all. Good night. Take good care. Bye. Bye.